IPXs. This is what we love to hear of. New developments in the field of LiDAR. They're calling it LiDAR 2. It's operating on a whole new principle that you might not even heard of. To get to the bottom of it, we're going to be talking to some experts from LidWave. Litsan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for, so much for having me. Let's start it off. What is LiDAR? Very simple. Light detection and ranging. Mm -hmm. Like a radar, but using light. Okay. And sort of, what do you see as the main applications of LiDAR right now, and what are its biggest drawbacks? Well... Whoa, whoa, whoa hold there. Only 12% of you are subscribed. Do yourself a favor and subscribe for daily engineering content. All right. The most famous one is, of course, autonomous vehicles mm -hmm. or safety systems for vehicles. Yep. But actually, there are a lot of other use cases even today, and it's it keep growing all the time. Um, uh, for safety systems like smart infrastructure, yep. um, for security systems, protecting mm -hmm. factories, you know, strategic uh, sites and so on. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of other things, uh, even yeah. in health. So what do, you, what do you feel its biggest drawbacks are at the moment? So the current uh, lighters are based on a technology called time of flight. Basically, okay. it was like when we were kids, we'd shout at yep. a mountain and wait for the echo. Exactly Doing right. Doing the same only with light. Yes. So you're sending out a very strong pulse of uh, laser, mm -hmm. usually around, let's say, for long range, around 100 watts. Okay. And then counting the time until it comes back to you. And then when you have the time until it came back, you're saying, okay, it was 18 nanoseconds times the speed of light. The Therefore, distance my distance. So and so. Yes. Um, but the problem is that when you work this way and you look at like, as photons, mm -hmm. you have the background noise, yes. you know, the sun, other systems, and so on. Yes. So it's it's like a floor that your peak has to, your returning signal has to be above higher, that, or you're higher, never going to so find it again. Not see yep. it. And also, there's limitation of how much power you can send out, the pulse. Yes. And still be eye safe. Yep. So that limits your range. Yes. And. I think the most important is that you're affected by the atmosphere around you. Uh, they have very hard time penetrating fog, dust, um, rain, and so on. At least most of the systems. So the it's not stable enough. It's yes. not dependable enough. Okay, so we'll stop beating around the bush. Nitsan, what is this? So this is solving a huge problem of today's lighters that they're very complicated. They're hard to manufacture. And what we managed to do by moving to a totally new technology, we're not using time of flight. Yeah. Time of flight is piston and engine uh, aircraft. We moved to jet engine. Aircraft. Right, that is the old stuff. This is the new. This is the new technology. It's coherent sensing. Okay. And it has in its base a huge advantage in SNR. Yes. And like 40 million times better SNR. And that allows us to emit a very low power laser mm -hmm. and still have a very long range. And because we can work with very low power lasers, yep. we can build everything into that tiny chip. So One the single chip piece of here, silicon. 10 by 10 millimeters, um, it has the lasers, the emitters, the receivers, mm -hmm. amplifiers, everything built into it, 40 channels. Yep. And we're emitting milliwatts and having a range of 600 meters and more. Right, so you've called this off camera before when we were chatting, a 4D LiDAR. So our first dimension might be length, width, X, Y, and then Z. Z. You've got depth. And the fourth dimension is velocity. Because right. Because we're emitting not a pulse, but a continuous wave. Mm -hmm. When we get the wave back, from the difference between the outgoing wave and the returning wave, we know the distance. Yes. But also we have Doppler shift to the returning wave. Right. Meaning if it hit a moving target, there will be differences in the returning signal that we can interpret and say, okay, that element was moving at such and such a velocity. So right. as raw data, you have velocity. You don't need to calculate it from differences between frames. Yep. Are you so you're saving time, you're saving uh, calculation power yeah. to get more accurate results. Amazing. This is a beautiful application of something that all of us engineers at home have learned about. Everyone knows about the Doppler shift effect. I'm sure someone can chuck it down in the chat. This is fantastic. So you're getting, so the previous LiDAR, right, you would have to take one frame, two frames, three frames, four frames. And if you wanted to extract velocity from that, you're taking the, dis you're sorry, you're taking the derivative, the, the, the difference yeah. between all of those, yeah. which is extra computation. Whereas now with LiDAR 2, with four <laughs> dimension, you've got all of this in, in, in one packet, yeah, really, all data. in you all the raw data. Each pixel, you have the information of velocity. Amazing. How do you see 
How do you see LiDAR2 changing the industry today? So, first of all, it's a lot easier to manufacture. Yes. So it can drive scale up and drive price down, make right. it more accessible for a lot of other use cases that before couldn't use it because it was too expensive. Big time. Yeah. On top of that, our sensor, as it is a coherent, coherent sensor, is totally, <clears throat> sorry, totally immune to interference. So right. we can stare directly into the sun and mm -hmm. it won't affect our ability to see things. Okay. Um, so if you have low sunlight, morning or evening, it won't affect you. It's not going to confuse this. Definitely not. We also are less affected than time of flight lidars by fog, rain, dust, and so on. So you get more dependable uh, performance. You get almost the same range, whatever the condition is, or enough range, whatever the condition is. You also can get longer ranges without passing the eye safety level. Mm -hmm. So we can get with our first samples, it would be around 600 meters yep. maximum detection range. Later on, it should reach about one kilometer. Yep. And then it makes it more feasible to have autonomous trucks, for instance, because if you have a truck driving at 100 kilometers an hour, you need long detection range yep, to allow yep, it yep. to maneuver. It. It's not a private car that can just change lanes or something. So it, again, it opens new uh, horizons, you can call it. Right. And on the other hand, you know, we have very long range, but on the other hand, we can also offer super depth resolution of just 50 microns, even less. 50 microns? Yeah, so you can actually use it for quality assurance. So what the last version of LiDAR, what sort of what sort of precision would you be getting with that at you know a high and mid level? Time of flight lidars at best would give you several millimeters. Right. Of, uh, depth. And now you're saying this will give you micrometers. Yeah. So right. again, a whole new field of uh, use cases. Yeah. So bottom line, we're solving the two main issues we have with time of flight lidars today, which is uh, complexity scaling up and stability of performance in different weather and uh, lighting situations. And on top of that, we're adding some extra bonuses um, of free Fourth velocity dimension. information yes. and um, the ability to work at longer ranges, much longer ranges, and having super depth resolution for Amazing. those cases. IPXs, if you, don't, if you don't want to be stuck with the propeller plane of LiDAR chips, this is the future. By Lidwave, this is their LiDAR chip. They're calling it LiDAR2. If you want to hear more about it, we'll have some links down in the description where you can find out everything you might need to know. Nitsan, thank you very much thank for introducing very us much. to the concept.